Hey friend, Chris Van Viver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Today I want to talk about duplicating or doubling guitar tracks, vocal tracks, anything that you might want to add some extra width, you want to add some power, some extra oomph. I've been seeing something in a lot of Logic projects as of late that I think we need to correct. We need to examine, deconstruct so we can do a better job at doubling our tracks. So let's say you have a vocal track or a guitar track that you want to double. You want to hard pan the vocal or the guitar to the left, have another version hard pan to the right to add width, add power, all these nice things. This is not the right way to go about that. And then we'll examine some better ways. So first I have an old project from the beginning of 2019. And let's just take a quick listen. We have guitar, we have bass, we have drums. And for now we're gonna have just the one guitar track down the center. Let's take a listen. Okay, sounded pretty good. So let's try doubling this guitar. So let's duplicate the track lane using Command D, or you can just use the button right up here. And I'm gonna option click and drag down. So now we've got technically two guitar tracks, right? We've got this one region and this new region that we duplicated. Okay, so let's now hard pan both guitar tracks and let's take a listen. I don't know if you're catching that. Let me solo these regions for you. And let's listen to what's going on here. It's kind of weird, right? We have two guitar tracks. They're hard panned. Let's just solo this one region here real quick. Double check. Okay, that's to the left. Okay, to the right, once again. These guitar tracks are summed to mono. What's going on here? I mean, technically we have two guitar tracks. What's going on is, is that these are the exact same region. They're the exact same performance, the exact same timing, the exact same pitch, the exact same. So there's nothing that differentiates these two regions from each other. I mean, let's just go into the mixer here. Let me throw the gain plugin right on here and invert the phase. Take a listen now. Yeah, there's nothing differentiating these two. So there's no way for us to get that doubled wide guitar effect. Or if we doubled and moved both guitars to the left, really all we're doing is making the same guitar performance louder. And you could achieve that just by, you know, going to that guitar track and turning up the fader. So how do we create a doubled effect? Ideally, you would have another take, another performance. Even if you're an amazing studio musician, every time you do a take, even if you get super close, you're still gonna have some minor variations in the performance. Timing, pulling on the strings, slight pitch variations, just very, very, very slight variations that make it very clear that these are two different performances. And I have that right here. So I have a guitar take here that is totally separate. So this gives us that doubled widen effect, you know, just make sure to move this pan over here. Brilliant. So if you've recorded vocals or a guitar or anything more than once, I would go through those other takes in your take folder or track alternatives and try to pick one that sounds good that you can use on another track lane. What would be ideal is to record one pass of the guitar through the song and then another pass of the guitar through the song two different takes, or pulling different takes from a take folder to create two different takes. But let's assume that this is just the one guitar track that I have. You know, the guitar is played through the song once, and that was it. So now it's up to me to create a duplicate track. Another option we could use is to pull the chorus guitar part from chorus two and copy and paste it on another track lane to chorus one, and vice versa, chorus one to chorus two. So let's check that out, let's duplicate. And just to make sure that this lines right up, okay, sure does. So option click and drag, and then let's bring this up right to the other chorus. 
And let's now hard pan and then solo and check it out. So you can hear those variations. Now, they're not perfect all the time, but this is a better solution because then we can fine tune using flex time or just chopping up the region and just, you know, fine tune the performance. This is much better than just duplicating the region. But check it out. Let's look at the end of the region here. So they're not the same performance. So this is a problem at this section of the song. And then if I try to copy and paste chorus one guitar to chorus two, we're gonna have the same problem. We're gonna have some uh, disparity in terms of performance. Okay, so what do you do in this situation when you don't have another take that you can just copy and paste from a different section of the song? Well, typically the suggested option is what is known as the Haas effect. The Haas effect is basically you duplicate the same exact performance, but you adjust the timing so it's slightly different timing from the original performance. Let's just kind of examine this. So copy and paste. Okay. So now let's throw the sample delay plugin that's included in Logic on this duplicated guitar track. And we're going to set it to milliseconds. And I'm just going to start adjusting the timing as we listen. Okay. So we're going to push it back. Okay, interesting. We're getting more of a double effect now. We hear the guitars on the left and right because the right one has been pushed back 19 milliseconds, which roughly like 15 to 23, 24 milliseconds is that window for the Haas effect. But I never find the Haas effect to be a good solution to the problem. I, I never like the result because to me, it sounds a little phasey because we're taking the same exact performance and pushing it back slightly in time. So it's the same exact waveform. You know, I mean, you take a look at the waveform. All that's happening now is that this part of the waveform, you can see they're identical, is just slightly back. So now there's some phase collisions and cancellations going on. I prefer to add a little extra processing. If I really have to do this, if I can't pull a different take from a different part of the song, if I can't find a different take in a take folder, then I would add a couple other processors. So let's dig into Space Designer. I'm going to bring in Space Designer, and I'm going to dig into the warped effects. And for this, because we're working with a guitar, let's use one of the amp cabs that are included in Space Designer. This is an impulse response of an amp speaker. Okay, so check it out. Let's now hear the two together. Okay, slightly wider. Let's bypass and reintroduce it. Okay, cool. So now we're getting even a wider effect. I mean, Space Designer is a reverb plugin, so it's probably adjusting the timing, but it's also an impulse response that was measured through a guitar amp. So there's a tonal difference as well. It's not just time. Now we're adding a variation in tonality. Okay, so one other thing I want to throw on here. Let's throw on the Overdrive plugin. And I'm going to set this gentle, you know, like just about there. And I'm going to make sure that the tone is set to 20. Okay, here we go. Thanks to the Overdrive plugin, we're adding new harmonics. I mean, it's gentle. We're not trying to crush this thing. We're not trying to beat it to death with Overdrive, but we're just adding a little new harmonic content to further differentiate the original region from this duplicate region. So now let's bypass both of these and reintroduce them. So now we have a much wider effect. Let's unsolo the regions. Let's mute that guy and take a listen.
Okay, so we're using Space Designer to adjust the tonality of this guitar so it's a little different from the first guitar, and we're using Overdrive for a little more harmonic information. Okay, let's now focus on something like a vocal, because you can't run a vocal necessarily through a speaker cab emulation. So let's just take a quick listen to this chorus vocal here. But there's no stopping love. Okay, so let's duplicate this vocal, and let's do the same thing. We'll hard pan, we'll throw the sample delay plugin on here, make some adjustments. But there's no stopping love. 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 Okay, so you hear that there's a separation now. The main vocal, the original, is on the left hand side and it's kind of louder because, again, there's some phase collisions, there's some frequencies that are getting boosted. It's the same thing still. So let's now introduce Space Designer go into the warped effects. We're gonna dig into analog circuits and I'm gonna look at maybe the clean console emulation. Here we go. Okay, I know that could drive you crazy, but the point is, is that Space Designer, again, is probably adjusting the timing. You might wanna play with the sample delay after the fact but it's adding a new tonality. This is an impulse response that was measured through a console. Okay, so let's now, instead of adding the overdrive plugin, I have Decapitator here from Sound Toys. Let's just switch from the emulation. So we had the A model. I'm gonna flip through these to see what sounds best to further differentiate this double track from the original. And there we have it. We are further differentiating the original vocal from the duplicate. So in a nutshell, I just really want to hammer home that if you duplicate a track and then you copy and paste that same exact region to the new track lane, yes, you're technically doubling it, but there's nothing that differentiates the duplicate from the original. So you're just making the same vocal region louder. We need to create variation. So ideally you would track multiple takes of you singing, of you performing, and pulling one of those takes to use as the duplicate or double. If we don't have that option, then I would search other sections of the song that are playing the same exact part that I could hopefully copy and paste. So, you know, chorus one guitar to chorus two and then chorus two's guitar to chorus one. So we now have two different takes. And if you don't have that option, then you can use the Haas effect using the sample delay plugin and playing around with the timing of the duplicate. But I suggest further refining the duplicate with something like Space Designer that can change the tonality even so slightly and also use some overdrive or saturation plugin to adjust the harmonic information just subtly to further separate these two. I hope that was helpful for you. If it was, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new posts, new emails to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.